The following comments are real. These are actual remarks directed to the borough president by fellow Staten Islanders through news and social media. comments there's an easier way it's called bp assist app it's an app we came up with that's a quality of life app you have a problem let us know i promise you we have a team here who wants to help and they will fix it bp assist app bp assist app i'm very happy that we're all here today and i think my job today is to put this announcement in its proper context and perhaps sanitize the record a bit, given some of the reaction that I have heard to the announcement starting uh, from Monday. Uh, for a very long time, Staten Island was on the outside, longingly looking to be a part of New York City's uh, fast ferry system. This did not sit well with me. I've spoken about it uh, publicly. I've spoken about it privately with the mayor. It usually happens right after the mayor uh, instructs the waiter to take away that northern Italian wine and bring the Sicilian wine in. <laughs> and I've talked about it on social media, which is what the boards are. Those are six JPEGs of all the tweets going back from 2014. Um, they called it Five Borough uh, Ferry at one point. Uh, candidly, I mocked it, and I called it Four Fifths Borough, uh, a Four Fifths Ferry. Uh, coincidentally enough, they changed the name to New York City uh, Ferry sometime after that. Um, but the reality on the ground, and that is a phrase I will use multiple times in the next few minutes, the reality on the ground is Staten Island has some of the worst commutes uh, in the nation, and we are desperate uh, for, for options. So to have another option for many Staten Islanders to take is a really good thing. For some, and for some only, it's quintessential Staten Island, for some, that no good deed goes unpunished. It's quintessential Staten Island, for some, to have a great uh, uh, deal of certainty more than the subject matter experts. Um, and I understand on some level the reaction initially that all you elected officials are so dopey. You're putting a fast ferry next to the Staten Island ferry. But they have to understand the realities on the ground. A long time ago, I went to see the godfather of fast ferry in New York City, the maca, the head honcho, Arthur Imperator, the guy who introduced fast ferry to New York City. You think he knows something about fast ferry? He does. He'll be 94 years old. I spent some time with him yesterday. He told me back in my days in the city council, if you want a successful fast ferry on Staten Island, Jim, it's location, including sufficient parking, frequency, and price point. Okay, the realities on the ground for a successful fast ferry for Staten Island, you need sufficient space for parking. You need to find a part of the shore that has the water, water depth. You don't want to. You don't want to negatively impact a community because you'll see what happened 25 years ago in Great Kills play itself out again. That is the reality on the ground. The administration was clear. Their smallest... Fast Ferry Spot has at least 1,000 customers. I think the number is 80% of those folks in the other boroughs walk, bike, or maybe take mass transit to get to that Fast Ferry. On Staten Island, it will be just the opposite. What does that mean? That means that we need space for what? 600, I'm being generous, 700, 800, 900 cars. 
When you figure water depth, when you figure parking, when you figure impact on a community, it's counterintuitive, but the reality on the ground is there is no spot that works today on the South Shore. There is no spot that works on the Mid-Island. The elected officials that preceded me, the elected officials today, this mayor, the EDC, the deputy mayor, we are not so obtuse that we, that we see, well, let's not put it on the South Shore. We understand the pain of the South Shore commuters, but as we sit here today, there is none. There was a great elected official Ask anybody. He was in the city council. His name was Vinnie Ignizio. Long before I got on this issue, when I was just a little old council member in the Mid-Island on Old Town Road, he was trying to bring Fast Ferry to, to the South Shore. And it was difficult. And it is difficult today. So for every good Staten Islander, well-intentioned Staten Islander, for every angry crank, for every aggrieved journalist peddling outrage, for every failed candidate you may know more than me, and you may know more than the mayor, and you may know more than the New York City EDC. You don't know more than Arthur Imperator. <laughs> and that's the truth. Now, I will close eventually. In March of 2014, I still didn't know where the men's room was in this building. In March of 2014, Vinny Ignizio went to South Amboy, New Jersey, met with Mayor Fred Henry, looking to try to see a connection with New Jersey. We went to Perth Amboy, Wilda Diaz, Mayor Wilda Diaz. We brought her to yeah. City Hall to meet Deputy Mayor Glenn. D uh, Councilman Borelli got a guy who ran for New, uh, New Jersey Governor, w Wasniewski, Assembly Member. We tried Sayerville. We met, my chief of staff and I met with the mayor of Bayonne, New Jersey, uh, Jimmy Davis, to try to figure out the best locations. And the reality on the ground, the criteria that are clear, this is where it works. Now, having said that, I'm not immune to the challenges that, that, that we have before us. I'm not r running away. Our job isn't done. The mayor referenced the, the, uh, the issue of transfers. Very big for Staten Island. There is right now an incompatibility between the payment systems on New York City Ferry and the Metro card and what will soon be the replacement of the Metro card. I spoke to the NYC EDC president, James Patchett. I talked to my good friend, Andy Byford, a couple of days ago. The mayor's already working on it. We understand the transfer issue. We talked to Andy Byford about, is there a way to configure the Staten Island Railway so we have some express trains? He said, Jim, I will tell my folks we're all in. We will work with you. And great news. I talked to James Patchett last night. I talked to James Patchett this morning. When I got Arthur Imperator to agree with, with Joe Ferreira to do a private sector fast ferry that landed at West 39th Street, the beauty of that was that he has a shuttle bus system that penetrates all parts of Manhattan. Talked to the administration last night, this morning. They get it. They agree to it. We're going to figure out how to have a bus system. So for all the folks who said, well, you leave me at West 39th Street and I have nowhere to go, you're going to have a shuttle bus system that's going to get you to different parts of Manhattan. That's, that's what we're trying to do. Last, last, I, um, I want to thank the mayor. I want to thank the deputy mayor. Um, we are having a good day with this. There's still more work to be done. Uh, and we will do that work. We will do that work. I, I, I very much appreciate that when I pick up the phone and when I reach out to the mayor, I get a response. We don't get everything we want. And Lord knows, sometimes it takes a lot longer than I want. And that's why these, all, these walls and other walls, and particularly my office, uh, echoes with some language that my mom would not be proud of. <laughs> But we are in this. We live and breathe this. I have the best team in the city working at Borough Hall. We feel the pain of the express bus riders. We feel the pain of the Staten Island commuter. I'm, in my, I'm a lame duck term limited guy, and I'm full of something and vinegar. <laughs> and we will continue the fight on every front. And I appreciate when the mayor of the city of New York comes to Staten Island with good news. This is good news. Amen. Thank right. you, sir. So here I am standing in what is center field for the softball field, which actually doubles as center field for the baseball field. And one of the interesting things about playing at the Berries was you often had a softball game happening at the same time as a hardball game, and you'd give each other a heads up if there was a ball that was hit. 
you know, running each other's way. Sometimes you would be someone you knew, and you'd have an interesting conversation as you tried to play. Um, this is where I think I spent most of my time playing in the berries. Probably my favorite position of all. Um, in part because you felt like you were in the middle of everything. Great read uh, off the bat, better and easier than playing. I always thought left field or right field because you had true read on the. And for those of us who couldn't really hit all that well, the best part of the game possibly could be running down a catch in the gap. Or for me, it was like a Lenny Dykstra like running in head first sliding catch to rob somebody of a hit off of a sinking line drive. But um, so many funny memories, funny comments made amongst the outfielders about your own pitcher if you didn't have it that day or batters. And um, the, the thing I loved about center was reading the body language of the hitter, seeing if he was going to go to the opposite way and try to pull the ball. This was center space too that was a wonderful thing about it you could be in your own head out here no one bothering you but you also had interaction with your teammates out in the outfield fun stuff hey it's Jimmy Otto and I am here at the iconic grounds of Mount Loretto speaking of iconic I'm with another legend my buddy from the city council days you leave me old doesn't it yes you are old <laughs> who uh runs catholic charity staten island and we are standing in the church that famously was part of the godfather the film on the steps outside and we're here to talk about the fact that hollywood has rediscovered mount loretto in no small part thanks to jen san martino and our team and the Made on Staten Island initiative that we started when we got to Burr Hall. But in all seriousness, Vinny, if we could be serious for a moment. Sure. This is a really good thing for Catholic Charities in addition to being a really good thing for Staten Island. Tell us what's happening on the, on the campus. Sure, just in the past month, we've had four major productions right here from Wu-Tang to Blacklist to American Saga. Universal Studios is coming. We're talking to Billions, which I really want to see because I love Billions. This is all part and parcel of what your office has been doing with Jen to try to get people out here. We had the commissioner of film out here with, with your staff to say, hey, take a look. We have unique situations here for filming right here in Mount Loretta. We have our own road system. We have these unique type of buildings, you know, things that we could use a church because it's not used every day. What they're looking for in Hollywood and what they say to me often is things that look old period pieces or that we can make something. There's plenty to do here. It's a 170 acre campus and all the money that we get goes right back into the charity to help development the disabled, to put on our festivals, to do nice things for the community. So they're here, they're making money, they're, they're spending money and catering and everything else. And it also goes back to the community in the form of improvements here from Mount Loretta. We got to Borough Hall in January in 2014 14. and one of the first things we said uh, we were gonna do is try to grab for Staten Island a larger uh, slice of that television and film pie. And the numbers from 2014 to now, and Jen's gonna go over some of those numbers, demonstrate the success. So it's happening here on the, on the grounds and the campus of Mount Loretto, but it's also happening across that island because if you have a particular backdrop, whether it's uh, urban, suburban, the woods, old buildings, water, you name it. You want a, a place that looks like Milwaukee, you want a place that looks like whatever, we have it. And Jennifer has done a fabulous job in getting Staten Island into the consciousness of Hollywood. And I want Jen to talk about what she's done on Made on Staten Island. So back in 2013, we were probably looking at 50 or 60 productions a year coming to Staten Island. Now we're up at 90 productions a year. And that's 90 productions. That's not how many permits were filed. That's not how many scenes they filmed here. That's 90 different shows or movies that we're filming here on Staten Island. Mount Loretta was one of the best examples of what we have to offer here for Hollywood in terms of what's on Staten Island. We can double for so many different uh, backgrounds. This campus um, has been in crime shows that were set in the 1950s and 1960s. Snow Harbor has actually been a Hawaiian uh, naval base. I mean, there's no, there's no end to the creativity of Hollywood, and they're able to do all these things on Staten Island. And I think that one of the reasons it works so well is because we have so many willing partners, um, like Catholic Charities, 
uh, like Snug Harbor, like historic Richmond Town, like private homeowners um, who are really willing to do this and, and communities coming together to make these things work. So how can you get involved? Um, if you own a home, uh, you can certainly put that home up uh, that you are film friendly. Um, you can go to our website, statenislandusa.com slash made on SI, and you will see an area where you can contact me, Jennifer San Martino, uh, via email, send me some photos and a description of your home and the best contact information to reach you. Um, I will tell you that what film industry is looking for are, believe it or not, things that are dated. Um, so if your house is perfectly preserved from 1950, 1960, 1970, 1980, in the 90s, they want to talk to you. Um, these are the kind of things they're looking for. They're also looking for attics. They're looking for tunnels. They're looking for uh, things that are sort of dark and creepy. Um, closets. Um, these are the kind of requests that we get. So that if that, those are things that you have on your property that you would be willing to have the film industry, uh, you know, come in and make a movie, make a commercial, make a TV show, um, they would want to talk to you about that. And we're happy to facilitate that conversation. If you're interested in uh, filming with your property or your business does catering or or your business does cleaning, um, any number of things, we can help you facilitate that relationship with the film industry. So please visit statenislandusa.com slash made on SI. And I think Jen um, touched on a, a, what is a really important point, and that is that this is about helping entities like uh, uh, Catholic Charities, but this is, an, this is a, a, a version of economic development. And the synergy between growing this uh, industry on Staten Island and Broadway stages, which is gonna come online in full capacity in the coming years, is obvious and it's real and we wanna to continue to grow it. And One of the good things we have here in, in a lot of places, on Staten Island in general, is we also have holding areas, we have places, because we have so much space, we have places for the trucks, we have places for people to wait, we have places to, for people to eat, we have large bathroom facilities. These are all the things that Staten Island has because we have much more land than they do say in Manhattan. So it makes it easier for film locations to come here and to utilize our space. Just last week, we had marvelous Mrs. Maisel, am I saying that yes. right? They were filming actually across the street and they used our area for trucks and for food services and for holdover. And that's great for us and it was great for the Department of Environmental Conservation where they, where they film for. So we're open for business. Come and talk to us and we want to see your film be shot here. The only criticism, the only downside is I have yet to get a movie part and I keep getting typecast as the angry middle-aged dude. I don't understand why that is. No, no, I. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy Otto and I am standing in front of the Little Red Schoolhouse as it's known here in Travis, PS26. And uh, I am supposed to love all of my schools equally and we try to, but PS26 is particularly special to me because in part the town of Travis is so special to me. We're here to announce some really good news. That is, we have made a marriage between the Archdiocese and the City of New York to acquire the rectory property and a few other parcels right down the street. So instead of dozens and dozens of houses, we are going to have a new school building. The money has been in the budget for a long time, several years, in the five-year capital plan. Um, but the hard thing for us over those several years has been trying to find or finding a, uh, an appropriate location. So much so that you might recall we thought about shifting that money to the East Shore where there's a need for elementary school seats in the Newdorf area by Newdorf High School. The community didn't like that idea. A lot of stuff happening all at once. Probably wasn't a good idea, but we were so desperate to bring school seats online. My team at Borough Hall heard that developers were circling, builders were circling to try to buy the property. And I immediately reached out to David Brown at the Archdiocese and said, hey, you have a parish looking to sell a piece of property. We've been looking for property for a school. I then called our good friend Lorraine Grillo at the School Construction Authority, and we made the marriage. They started talking, and I'm really, really, really relieved and thrilled to say that there is a signed contract between the Archdiocese and the city so that the city is going to acquire that property down the road. We have a wonderful PS26 school here. Laura Cup and her team do a great job, but for a really long time, this school has been... Um, 
making do under really difficult circumstances, turning closets, room closets, into spaces where kids are, are, are learning. Um, we need to find a way to make PS26 uh, a brand new school in the property we built. And by the way, my last request, request of the city will be to name the new PS26 at that property after Janice Blanchard, who is, um, uh, was an angel here on earth and is an angel in heaven looking down on Travis and looking down on us here on Staten Island. So, uh, one last thing I have to say, one of the reasons why this school is so special is in 1992, as a very young, brand new staffer to then Councilman John Fusco, I attended a meeting here, a community meeting, on behalf of John Fusco about the need for a traffic light for the PS26. Apparently it was a long standing fight. And I came to the school and the crowd was rightfully angry. And long before cell phones, I found a pay phone and got in touch with Councilman Fusco and said, boss, you need to come here. And that actually started our quest in getting a traffic light out in front of the PS26. And John Fusco worked on it for a long time. And then when I got to the city council, we actually won that fight. And that's why the traffic light is out there. It was a very rocky beginning of what absolutely has been a love affair with PS26 uh, and this Travis community. This is a really, really special place. And uh, to be able to secure this property, to avoid more homes with more cars and more kids with no place to put them, to be able to build a new school, to provide elementary school seats, hopefully to make it the new PS26, to spend something special with this building. It is such a win-win-win across the board. happening yet again here on the grounds of Mount Loretto, the Friday night, Saturday and Sunday of Columbus Day weekend, which is October 11th, 12th and 13th. Tell the folks at home a little bit about Festa Italia. Sure, I mean, it's been a great Italian festival. We have a lot of parking, so people love that. We have a lot of land, so people can spread out, the kids can play. Of course, you can have your Zeppelis. Of course, you can listen to Louis Prima and enjoy Italian culture, but it's just a great time to come out with your families. We make our road here in front of the church almost like 18th Avenue, where we have vendors that, that are out selling pizza and selling Italian trinkets, and the music is playing in the background. The kids are on the rides. It's a fundraiser for Catholic Charities in Staten Island, which provides such vital services, everything from senior centers to daycares to help for the developmentally disabled. So it's a win-win for the Staten Island community. People have a great time and bring your family out. But don't forget the tagline, Vinny. This is the biggest Columbus Day celebration in the history of Staten Island. Chicka cheese! Oh, happy Halloween, <laughs>
So in the last year or so, probably 18 months, maybe even closer to two years, I've been doing lots of reading. For the first time since my days in law school, I've gotten my love back for reading. And I've talked a lot about it on social media and at various events. And perhaps some people are tired of it by now, but uh, I strongly encourage Staten Islanders of all ages to find that love for reading again. I got a book in front of me called Farsighted by Stephen Johnson. It's gotten lots of acclaim. And it's about the processes that we undergo or should undergo in making, not the decisions, not those spur of the moment or those quick decisions, but impactful decisions that will uh, last a lifetime. And um, that is sort of the latest moment of thought uh, that, that's taken place. Lots of conversations with my, um, my team and, you know, um, for all the criticisms about elected officials, for all the comments about politicians, I get to come into this building every day and work with a team of people who care. And their only mission is to get shit done. And um, so, you know, we have found ourselves the last few years ensconced in this really amazing battle. Um, we came here in 2014 and I said to then, uh, I said to uh, Deputy Borough President Ed Burke uh, and the team, let's figure out what's real and what's not real, the stuff that we've inherited. And one of those things was the Croc Center. And I won't belabor the point because you've heard me rant on and on about it, but we breathed life into a building and a process that was dormant, was eight years into it, and we thought we could bring it to life and it was everything that the North Shore needed. It was uh, no happenstance that Stapleton was selected by the Salvation Army. It was a national uh, search uh, for the right location and that very much was the right location. And that thing didn't happen and you guys know the story. And to this day, I'm still pissed off about it because had leaders gotten uh, behind it, uh, we wouldn't have lost that. And that led to this struggle about, oh, where's the pool going to go? Where's the indoor pool going to go? And I have had a very distinct opinion, and I think I'm right. Maybe the other folks think they're right. Um, um, and I've watched, instead of getting two bites at the apple, Staten Islanders sort of cannibalize each other and, and only get one bite at the apple. And I've watched it until, you know, recently in this pitting the Cromwell Center versus Croc, which was a mistake, and those folks made a mistake doing that. And I'm, I'm watching it now, pitting Cromwell Center versus where I think the pool should go at Petrides. And um, so you look at, there's $100 million allocated, a commitment the mayor made to me privately. Um, it wasn't $100 million initially, but the mayor said, we screwed up, our administration screwed up, we needed to get you the $20 million for Croc. We want an indoor pool, we'll get it done. And then he said that publicly. Um, by the way, that, that came about, if you think about it, because when we got to Borough Hall, we breathed life into the Croc Center. That's why there's a commitment out there by the mayor for 20 million, 25 million, 50 million, 75 million. Now it's $100 million that has been allocated. That doesn't happen unless this Borough Hall team comes to Borough Hall and breathes life back into the Croc Center and the Croc Center has its untimely demise. I think people forget that and they finally, they suddenly think there's $100 million that has fallen from the sky and that somehow some other group is entitled to this, that, and the other thing. I don't see it that way. That money materialized because of the work in this office, the commitment that this team put in place, the mistakes made by the de Blasio administration, the fact that the mayor was big enough to acknowledge those fakes, uh, those mistakes, and has tried to make amends for it. Anyway, I've 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 gotten into the minutia and the tension that has existed. So you know, we try to live what we preach, and I'm amazed every day at the certainty. My God, the certainty on social media. You are so certain there in the ether that you're right about an issue that other people live and breathe every day, but you're right, and i just amazed by it. But then you say to yourself, you don't wanna make that same mistake. 
So you find yourself, I'm going to win this battle. I'm right. I'm going to win this battle. And you dig deeper, and then they dig deeper. You got to take a step back. Um, that's what one of the benefits of all this reading has taught me. And reading this book is a good reminder of that. So I had this conversation with my chief of staff, Jason Rzewski, and take a step back. What are we doing? We, we're coming up to another budget. It's 100 million. They say they're going to need another 20 million to build it at Petrides or somewhere else. Is that really the best use of the money? And, well, Jim, what would you want to do if we said, all right, we don't want to pursue the pool? Well, and the natural, natural next step to me is I want what we said we were going to deliver to Staten Island in 2014, and that was a campus that focuses on health and wellness that will get the rest of Staten Island healthier. Not a housing project that is wrapped in the cloak of some health and wellness. And that's what I felt that our efforts with the EDC resulted in. And I wasn't happy with that, and that's why you haven't heard us talk about the health and wellness campus on the grounds of Seaview or the RFP, because I wasn't happy with the RFP. I don't need a new community that has a few health and wellness components, and we're going to make the people living in that new community um, healthier and more well. I want a hub that's going to reverberate outward, that's going to take the other 499,000 or so Staten Islanders and make them healthy. So yeah, I'd l if, I'm, if you ask me what I want to do, I want to build that I want to build that health and wellness campus the way we originally envisioned it. We have other conversations, other dots over the weeks and the months and the years, and then we start connecting it. And here's what we have come up with. Health and wellness campus, Seaview Hospital, diabetes ravaging all parts of this borough. People say, uh, I was diagnosed some pre-diabetic. Many people don't even know what pre-diabetic means, but they are. And if you've been impacted, if your family's been impacted, you know friends who are impacted by diabetes, you know what a difficult life that is for the individual and the caregivers around them. So we went to the mayor and we said, you know, here's the situation, here's the reality on the ground on the pool. We'd like to pivot. We don't want to just win the battle of, well, the pool went where I want it, or we got the pool. We want to have a greater impact. So I proposed to the mayor that the pool at Petrides um, is something we no longer want to pursue. We want to take that $100 million. We want to partner with Northwell. We want to partner with New York City's H&H. Uh, &H. We want to partner with other local providers. And we want to build a diabetes center on the grounds of Seaview and build a health and wellness campus organically from that building. We want to serve Staten Island uh, from Tottenville to St. George. We want to go into the communities that are being ravaged by diabetes, and we want to create something that's going to make their lives better. Oh, by the way, we're going to take a portion of that $100 million, and we're going to go back up to our friends at Goodyear that have an existing pool, and we're just going to make a little top. We're just going to bubble it or enclose it so there's uh, a pool that can be used year-round. Not an indoor pool, not the $100 million facility, but something that could go hand-in-glove with that beautiful new community center that the good folks at Children's Aid Society are going to be able to build thanks to the commitment that the mayor and I made to buy the, the good you property. And now we're having multiple bites at the apple. Uh, with the folks at Cromwell who want a renewed Cromwell, a, a new Cromwell, and envision getting additional money to put a pool there, that, man, that's a fight maybe that, that, that they uh, are worthy uh, of having and should have and that will continue. Um, but I think there is a higher purpose. I think there is a much bigger impact. 
I think there is a bigger fight uh, that we want to fight. I think the numbers, the health numbers, the health indicators across the island tell me, take a step back, remember the lessons in all of these books. It's not about proving that you were right. It's about living up to the values that you preach and the values that you hold dear. It's about the priorities that you set. It all starts with health and wellness. Any of you out there who have family members who uh, have endured illness, you know the rest of life um, is on shaky ground when that happens. And um, again, uh, we will, over the coming weeks and months, talk in more detail about just how horrific the numbers on Staten Island are. Um, but we don't want to be certain. We don't want to be right for the sake of being right. We want to be right as defined by impacting the most lives and doing the most good.